Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. I recently uploaded a video of 10 Japanese films from the 1980s that you should watch. Well, here are 10 more recommendations for you, so let's do it. The Funeral, 1984. This is a drama comedy. After an old man dies, this episodic film moves from one incident to another over the course of the three-day funeral, which is held in the home. Now this contrasts old ways and new ways comically, getting very detailed on how it shows the pre-funeral arrangements with the family members, as well as the actual rituals themselves. Humor is laid back and quaint, some of which might go over the viewer's head if they're not paying attention. This film by Juzo Itami won a bunch of awards in its home country. Shogun Shadow, 1989. This is an action flick. The Shogun order a young lord to travel to Edo in five days for an initiation rite to become the successor. Suspecting an attempt on his life, a small group of warriors escort the boy while eluding their enemy. This is one of those no-nonsense action-adventure uh, uh, flicks that has just madness. Just lots of sword fights and death scenes to behold. This is definitely a crowd pleaser. The protagonists are badasses, and the horse stunts are impressive. A briskly paced adventure from director Yasuo Furuhata that is highly entertaining. Mermaid Legend, 1984. This is kind of a thriller horror hybrid. When a fisherman stands in the way of an industrial scheme, the business developers have him murdered. His wife, a pearl diver, seeks vengeance. Now, the visuals here are quite beautiful, with many shots of the ocean, both at surface level and underwater. Scoring is also great and very tranquil, which assists the deliberate pace during the opening half. But don't let that fool you, because this film has a lot of bite to it. Viewers should beware of a few sex scenes, as well as an escalating level of graphic bloody violence as the story crescendos to its conclusion. I think this features one of the most stunning depictions of murder in the history of cinema. Uh, by the end of the film, it will impact you. This film by Toshiharu Ikeda should be more well known. Circus Boys, 1989. It's a drama. Two young brothers in 1930s Japan are given away to the circus because their parents are poor. Now, this film shows their adult lives as they diverge into different paths. One a circus performer, the other a con man. Shot in black and white, this film is beautiful and looks like it was made in the classical era. Director Kaizo Hayashi uses some great visual tactics that express character feelings in interesting ways. A lot of time is spent within the circus, which is very cool to watch. Scoring is impressive. This is a unique gem from an underappreciated director. Village of Doom, 1983. This is a horror drama. Set during World War II, a young man is kept from serving in the war due to his tuberculosis condition. Now, his affairs with sex-starved village women, as well as his clashes with others, leads to tragedy. The main character here is pretty timid near the beginning, but gradually becomes more aggressive throughout. Events within the village slowly spiral out of control. There are some disturbing and violent moments here as well. The lengthy finale is memorable, to say the least. Very cool flick from director Noboru Tanaka. Sweet Home, 1989. This is a horror film. I'm doing a lot of genre films uh, for this decade, aren't I? A news crew goes to an abandoned house to find and film a rare painting, but cross paths with a deadly apparition in this film by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. The first impactful sequence occurs near the half-hour mark, as the film contributes a truly incredible horror sequence with expert use of shadows and gore. The supernatural phenomena that are showcased afterward are pretty impressive and diverse, with both the practical and special effects uh, being quite neatly uh, combined. There's also an underlying theme of maternal love here. Now, this is not nearly as cerebral as Kiyoshi's later titles, but it's certainly entertaining. And FYI, this film was released in conjunction with a video game of the same name, and that game is considered to be one of the original survival horror video games and served as inspiration for the Resident Evil video game franchise. The Crazy Family, 1984. It's a comedy drama. 
The title is entirely accurate. Sogo Ishii directs this film about a family that moves into their suburban dream home, but subsequently become inflicted with a civilization sickness, so to speak, that basically just drives them all insane. This is basically a satire on the prototypical Japanese family, which exaggerates the flaws to absurd proportions. I especially enjoyed the son, who uses ridiculous lengths to study for his college entrance exams. This is quite loud and very nuts for a film, with characters who go completely off their rocker. Now, some scenes during the second half are outlandishly fun, but this is a really good flick and uh, definitely worth, uh, worth seeking out. Tokyo, The Last Megalopolis, 1988. This is a horror drama and a fantasy hybrid, too, I would say. Now, this is set during the early 1900s. A demonic soldier plans to awaken the sleeping spirit of a warrior who was executed a thousand years ago. And if he succeeds, Tokyo will be destroyed. Now, certain plot details are a bit muddled and confusing, but this is a very unique movie because it blends Onmyoji spellcasting, Japanese superstition, and urban environments together. There are some cool physical effects, including some stop motion, and some horrific imagery, like some uh, bizarre monsters. It is on the slower pace side, but when the weird stuff hits the fan, it's very entertaining. It especially holds true for the finale. This is the live-action film from Akio Jisoji, not to be confused with the similarly titled anime, which is also worth watching. Virus, also known as Day of Resurrection 1980, this is a drama horror flick. After a deadly biological weapon is mistakenly released, the world's population is systematically destroyed. This post-apocalyptic film by Kinji Fukazaku is a solid example of how such films should be made, because it does have some balls to it in an overall bleak tone. You know, the opening half is pretty finely crafted in terms of the spread of the disease, while the second half focuses on the isolated group of survivors. There are a few unrealistic elements here that I mentioned in my full-length review on my channel, but there are also some surprising twists late in the film that I enjoyed. And due to the global focus of events, much of the cast are non-Japanese actors, but they do a good job. Again, the essential thing is to watch the uncut 156-minute Japanese version. should avoid the U.S. cut, which eliminates 48 minutes of runtime, which is pretty insane. This is good stuff. Bound for the Fields, the Mountains, and the Seacoast, 1986. This is a pretty wacky comedy drama. Now, it's set during the months leading up to World War II. A group of kids and teenagers interact and play games in and out of school. It's another oddball film by Nobuhiko Obayashi that showcases a number of bizarre moments. Anybody who's familiar with this guy will not be surprised. Sometimes you just have to shake your head and laugh in disbelief at just how nutty this director can get. However, the humor is amusing here because there's a down-to-earth charm to it all. The film is very authentic and unique in its portrayal of Japanese culture as well. So if you want something different, here's, here you go. You know, this is actually one of the director's more entertaining films, in my opinion. So there you have it. Ten more Japanese films from the 1980s that you should watch. Now the titles for the films in this video are listed in the description box below. Uh, I'm not providing availability info in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. My usual method for checking availability is Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. Now, the availability of some of these titles from the 80s, including the ones from part one of this 80s video, is kind of rough nowadays, but, you know, that's why I like doing this playlist. It gives me the opportunity to just cut loose, recommend stuff that I've seen before without having to worry about a, a current availability. So, uh, if you could find any of the films that I'm recommending, though, they're definitely worth checking out. And hopefully some of these will get some better availability over time. Hopefully. Now, uh, in my next video in this playlist, we're going to crack into the 1990s, which is another pretty fruitful period with a lot of interesting stuff. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I'll see you next time.